Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Unparalleled Universe for another action figure review slash showcase. And today we're taking a look at some of these S-Ray Studios Fight for Glory Wave 5 figures. And as you can see, I have three different figures here, but two of them are exactly the same. Back here, I have two of the Marcus figures. There is a third character in the wave. That one goes by the name of Alias. I think that's how you say it. That's a really cool looking figure. I think that he may be like the leader of the squad. It would be nice to get him to complete the set. But as it is right now, these are the ones I have. So these are what we're going to talk about. And I want to give a huge thank you to the folks over at 5K Toys for sending these out to me to review. I really do appreciate it. I wonder if there was like a mix up somewhere. <laughs> I'm curious if another review guy somewhere out there has two of the Alias figures. I'm going to have to link up with whoever that is and see if we can make a trade. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into it. As you can see, we don't have any boxes, so we're going to jump right into the figures, starting off with the Roman infantry figure. And as you can see, these things look absolutely incredible. They have some amazing sculpting work, a lot of great details, some really cool designs, lots of nice colors. There's Man, there's all kinds of paint on these guys. Lots of silvers and golds, and yeah, man, looks really, really good. Damn, yeah, they, they got pretty crazy with the details and stuff. The figures do look incredible. But I will say, these guys don't really have a whole lot of articulation. So as far as posability goes, there's not really, there's not a lot you could do, you know? But they do look really dope just standing there. Like, it would be cool to have two or three of these Roman infantrymen or actually like four, just have like four of them, you know, lined up to like protect some kind of king character that you have, you know, I think that'd be awesome. Uh, but yeah, man, this is a great looking figure for sure. But let's go ahead and get in close and take a look at the details on them. Starting off at the head with this really dope helmet. All the paint and the sculpting on this guy is really crisp and clean. It looks really, really good. Check out the gold and silver on the helmet. That all looks really nice. On the back of the helmet, we have some more details. We have some scratches and stuff. That looks good. So really nice work on the helmet. And it does have a removable faceplate. Oops, there we go. So if you want to display it with the guy's face showing, you can. This kind of re <laughs> reminds me of Ram Man. But it does look pretty good. And of course, the entire helmet is removable. So 5K Toys sent a letter along with these figures saying that these are pre-production samples and some of the paintwork isn't quite right yet. And they specified that the head still needed some work, so uh, keep that in mind when you're looking at this here. It does, in my opinion, even though, you know, they have some work to do, I think it still looks pretty good. It's a good looking head sculpt, paintwork looks decent, and I definitely think it works, you know. It looks better with the helmet on, no matter what. But I think this is a decent looking head sculpt, and it's nice that it's gonna get even better. And then moving on to the body, there's a lot of really great paintwork on here. It's impressive in areas like this where we have brown, gold, and silver all really close together, but none of the colors are leaking onto the other colors whatsoever. Everything is really clean. Like you don't see any gold where it's supposed to be silver or any brown on the silver or anything like that. It's just all clean and really well done. So that's impressive. And he's got this strap that goes around the, the entire figure. And I thought this was glued down, but it's not. It's actually kind of pinned down by the the belt here. Man, look at the belt. Damn, that's crazy. Look at all that stuff. These, these things are really small on the belt. But again, the paint is really clean, and there's no, no paint where it's not supposed to be, you know? It looks really good. And then check out the details on here. Man, it all looks really dope. We have some more of that brown, gold, silver combo right here. Yeah, this is a great looking figure. On the arm, he does have like a forearm guard with some gold uh, rivets, I guess you could call them. I don't know, but that looks good. Oh, and then taking a quick look at the shield before we move on to the legs and stuff. The shield does look good, but it kind of sucks because the, the two shields between the two figures are exactly the same. They have the same marks and everything, like the same scratches. It would have been nice if they changed it up a little bit, especially with the design, you know. I'd imagine that like, Different ranks would have different design shields, or at least different, like, emblems on them. I don't know. But these do look good. Check out the details on there. Yeah, that looks good. And back to the figure here. 
yeah the belt area is really really impressive and whatever these are tassels i don't know but they look good and then he does have a sword sheath on the side with a sword that fits in there nicely we'll take a look at that in just a minute but we have some paint detail on the skirt area i guess is that what it's called a skirt i don't know <laughs> but it looks good and then he does have these shin guards that have some nice detail it's very clean and really well sculpted yeah this is a beautiful figure man they did a great job with all the details on it the paint is really really nice that's really the that's probably the most impressive thing to me how clean all the paint is and the sculpting work is beautiful as well so it's definitely a great looking figure and then for accessories he comes with three different sets of hands so first off we have a set of gripping hands and then we have a pair of fists and then we have a set of open hands and then he does come with some weapons including his spear i think this looks really good it's very nice and clean really well sculpted some nice paint work and i love that it's sharp on both ends it looks like he could really do damage with this and then he also comes with a shovel i'm not really sure why he has a shovel it feels kind of random but i'm sure there's a good reason why he comes with this but it does look really good and then he does have a smaller sword that fits into the sheath that's attached to him and it slides out very nicely with no problem at all the sword itself looks really good it's got a lot of great detail on the handle and the blade itself has a shiny metallic look so that's very nice and then moving on to marcus i think he looks even better than the roman infantryman check him out he's got all kinds of detail on his in his armor and stuff it's more like complex than the previous figure but it looks really good there's all kinds of different golds and silvers in there like each one of these like things on his chest has like <laughs> extreme detail we'll take a look at that when we get in closer but yeah man this is a great looking figure i love the way the helmet looks too it kind of has a like a spooky kind of vibe to it you know it reminds me of those guys from 300 but it looks really dope and then he does have like this soft goods thing in the back looks like he straight ripped it off of an animal and threw it on his back that looks really dope and then on the front it kind of comes across like a beard a little bit <laughs> and you know obviously i'm not an expert on all the details on these types of characters i don't know too much about like roman military or anything like that back in the day but um i will say though i, I don't know if these guys are like army builders but they do look pretty badass having like two side by side kind of like guards or something you know and then taking a look at the details on marcus check out this helmet man this looks awesome I like this helmet a little bit more than the previous one because it's easier to line up his face correctly because you could see the eyes and the nose and stuff. But man, that looks crazy. It, it looks very cold, you know, because you could see his eyes, but you can't see any of his other facial features, you know. You don't know what the hell's going on under there. But he looks like he's ready for business, that's for sure. <laughs> ready to, like, execute someone or something. It's a really dope helmet. Oh, man, look at that. Some great detail on it, just like the last one. The paint and the sculpt is very clean and crisp and extremely well done. And then he does have like this mohawk or sideways mohawk thing on the top. I'm sorry, I don't know what this is called. Let me know in the comments if you know the official name, but it looks good. It's very well painted. It's red with a little bit of a black wash and it looks really nice. But yeah, this is a cool looking helmet for sure. Same kind of detail on the back as the previous one, but it's all very clean, and he does have a removable faceplate. Let's try to get that off. Boom, there we go. And then you could see the face, and you could display it that way if you want. It's nice to have the different display options. This looks cool, but obviously with the faceplate on, it looks way better. Then you could remove the helmet, and there's the head sculpt. And again, they still have some work to do on these heads, but as it is, I still think it looks pretty good. Then moving on to the body. Oh, this is really impressive. Look at the details on these things. Look at that. You can see a face on there. And all these different things, you know, like symbols and stuff. I'm sure each one of these means something. Like they all have to have some type of significance. But yeah, they look really good. And, you know, just holding the figure, it's hard to even see the details on these. But then when I'm close with my camera, you're able to get a good look at it. And you could really see how detailed it is. Look at that. Bam. That's crazy. Dope. And then moving on to the rest of the detail on the armor, we have like a chainmail kind of situation in here. That looks good. I don't know what the hell these are, but they look nice. <laughs> He's got his arm guard. And he does have two... two uh, sword holders or sheaths 
not necessarily swords, but we've got one on this side. Then we have a dagger on this side that we'll look at in a minute. But yeah, I like the design of this guy. I like the different colors and stuff. Ooh, again with these things. Look how clean all that is. Yeah, just the paintwork on these things is absolutely ridiculous. Then he does have this. Is it called like a pelt? <laughs> but that looks good. The soft goods on here are, are pretty nice. Feels good. And it doesn't look too awkward. Sometimes things like this can look weird. But I think on him it looks good. And then moving down into the lakes. Oh, he's got gold shin guards. Nice. So yeah, man. Just like the the infantryman, this guy is freaking beautiful. It's got some crazy sculpting work and a lot of display options. So I think that's really, really dope. It's a great looking figure. And then for accessories, Marcus comes with the same set of hands as the previous figure. We get a set of open hands, a pair of gripping hands, and then a pair of fists. And then he also comes with two different swords. One of them is the same that we saw in the last figure, so that looks really good. But then he does have like more of a dagger type sword that goes on the opposite side of him. And this looks really nice too. Slides in and out of the sheath nicely with no issue at all. And again, this knife looks really good. I like the silver that they use on the blades. It's pretty consistent with all the different figures and all their different weapons. So that is nice. But yeah, this is a very cool looking dagger. And then he does come with this wooden cane. I'm not sure exactly what's up with this. Maybe he's like an older character that needs help walking sometimes. <laughs> who knows but uh it does look good it's kind of soft plastic but it's okay i think it does look pretty cool and it's nicely sculpted so yeah could definitely find some use for this all right so now for some quick size comparisons here we have them alongside the zesray studios wave one combatant figures and i do think that all these guys look pretty good together and then next up, we have them alongside a couple of Mythic Legions figures. And even though Mythic Legions have more of like a fantasy element, I still think they fit in pretty good with these guys. And then here we have them alongside the Spiro Toys, Animal Warriors of the Kingdom, Pale, and the Mezco 112 Collective Conan. Next up, we have them alongside the Nada Toys enveloped Yamo figures. And these two figures are some of the greatest figures that I own. I absolutely love them. And then of course here we have them alongside the Marvel Legends Renew Your Vows Spider-Man and the Marvel Legends Bucky Cap. Next up we have them alongside the G.I. Joe Classified Firefly and the Black Series Imperial Stormtrooper. And then lastly to get them in here with some big guys here we have them alongside the Zespray Studios Minotaur and that thing is freaking awesome. I'm going to be reviewing him as well. Spoiler, I love it. On the opposite side we have one of the Guardians of the Horde. And then for articulation, we'll go ahead and use this guy here. It does seem like both of these figures have the exact same articulation setup. They're basically the same bodies and all that. So, you know, the articulation is identical between these two figures. But man, I've got to say, <laughs> these guys do not have that much articulation at all. It's very limited. And that's unfortunate because I feel like the first wave of Zesray Studios figures had some pretty good articulation and they were fun to play with. I like those figures. Uh, but with these guys... They took a step back in the articulation department, and I'm sure it's because they wanted to maintain the integrity of the sculpt and the aesthetic and all that. So I totally get it, but I do feel like there are some areas where they could have compromised just a little bit and given some articulation. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and see what we have going on starting off at the head. He does have a ball peg, so we get a little bit of tilt action, which is pretty nice. And then he could look up to about right there, not a whole lot. He could look down to right there, which is pretty good, and then it could look side to side. And then for the torso, he has absolutely nothing going on. There's no articulation in the torso, and that's unfortunate. I really think they could have gone the Mythic Legions route and put a ball joint here in the waist, especially with the belt. You know, they have the belt, so it could have, you know, hidden the articulation and allowed for a little bit of movement, but they decided not to. And again, I think it has to do with them being committed to the look and the design and stuff, so... I can, I can respect that, but I do wish there was some articulation on these guys because the torso has nothing at all going on. And then for the arms, he does have like these ball joints that are really well hidden actually, but they still get some really nice movement. So those are nice. And then his arm can go all the way around. He does have this shoulder pad, but it just kind of gets out of the way and it's hinged as well. So, you know, it moves nicely and it doesn't really hinder the articulation all that much. And then he could bring his arms out to the side, which, again, that's pretty good considering that he has those big old shoulder pads. That'll work. And then he does have single-jointed elbows, but they get some decent range, actually. I mean, you know, it's 90, but that's okay. 
yeah, they get a little bit of movement. And then there's a swivel in there. And then at the hand, he does have a ball joint at the wrist. That's a little tight on that one. But there's a ball joint on the wrist that has a hinge. So you could hinge his hands and you could move the ball joint, you know, so that you could put his hand in any position that you want. So that's nice. So I think the arms are, are pretty good, actually. You could do some good stuff there. And then for the legs, again, you know, like the legs are just kind of useless. I mean, he does have like a ball joint situation at the hip. So as you can see, we get some nice like upper thigh swivel in there. There's not like an upper thigh cut. There's just that ball joint at the hip. But that's it's really cool like how much movement this allows without having like an official thigh cut in there. So that's that's really dope. I feel like a lot of companies try this same setup and it doesn't really work as well. But they do a good job with it. And then uh, can't really go forward whatsoever. I mean, I guess that, <laughs> I guess considering that this is all covered, like, that's okay. But you can't really do anything with it, you know. Then he does have double jointed knees, which again, like, because you can't really move the upper leg, the double jointed knees are just kind of useless too. There's not really a whole lot you could do with the legs, unfortunately. But he does have double jointed knees. And then we do have a swivel at the ankle which swivel side to side and then he does have a rocking ankle as well and then his foot can move forward to right there and then come up to right there so yeah that's about it for the articulation not a whole lot going on you're not going to be able to pick these guys up and pose them around a bunch or anything like that um, I really do wish that I, I mean I hate to say I wish they made some sacrifices you know but it's their it's their creative vision so I can't really bash them they definitely excelled in the areas where they were trying to, you know, the figures look amazing, but um, I just really wish that they were able to incorporate a little bit of articulation somewhere in the torso. I feel like the ball joint in the waist would have been ideal for a setup like this. And then for the legs, like, why not just, like, cut a slit right here? But then maybe they'd be like, nope, that's not the way the armor looked in those days. We're not doing it. So I can respect that, but... From an action figure perspective, I definitely wish there was more articulation on these guys. Alrighty, so overall, at the end of the day, when the smoke clears, the dust settles, and it's all said and done, I think these guys came out pretty dope. I think they look incredible. They're really well sculpted. The detail is insane. Like, the amount of detail that are in these guys is pretty, like, mind-blowing. They really did a great job with all that. All of the armor looks really nice. It's very well painted. And the figures just look really, really dope. And I think that they would make for really nice display pieces and I also think that they would work for like as background characters to kind of fill out the scene a little bit if you have like something like Mythic Legions or something that has a little bit more posability like being the focal point having these guys like behind them doing their thing would be pretty cool but as far as getting anything really dynamic out of these figures themselves it's gonna you know it's gonna be tough because the articulation is very limited and it's hard for me to sit here and say like oh they did a bad job with the articulation because you know, I know this company is capable of good articulation, but I think in this case, like, they just weren't really concerned with that. They just wanted to make some really cool-looking Roman-era-inspired figures, and I think they, they did a good job with that because the figures look awesome, but they just don't move very well. So, personally, these aren't necessarily something I would gravitate towards only because I like figures that you could pick up and play with and that look amazing. These guys look amazing but they're just not very much fun to handle or play around with because the articulation is so limited. But I think people that are into Mythic Legions could definitely get into these because they do have like a similar feel and stuff. They just don't quite have as much articulation and you know <laughs> that's funny to say because mythic legions don't even have that much articulation but they have enough to where you could do something with them these guys there's really not much you could do so in my opinion they work the best as just display pieces but yeah if you're into like history and different time periods and this and that i think these guys would be very cool to have in your collection and yeah i think they're dope and even though like i'm they're not necessarily something that I would be all crazy about. I still want to get the third character because I think having the three of them would be pretty dope to have in a display. I still have the Zesray Wave 1 stuff on display. I think they look really, really good, but they just have more articulation, so I'm more of a fan of those. But I do think these guys will look really dope on the shelf next to them, so... Yeah, that's where I'm at with it. I could see what they're going for. I could appreciate it. But obviously, the lack of articulation kind of keeps me from being, like, super interested. And with that, I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Also, be sure to keep an eye out for the Minotaur review. I'll be reviewing that very soon. I want to give a huge thank you to the folks over at 5K Toys for sending these out to me to review. You guys are always awesome. I do appreciate you. Thank you so much. Peace.